everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Australian Institute of Architects National Prizes Announcement. I'm Shannon Batterson, National President, and it is my pleasure today to be presenting these prizes, which celebrate the exceptional contributions of the Institute's members. I would like to begin by acknowledging and paying my respects to the traditional owners and custodians of the lands across Australia in which we meet today. In particular, the traditional owners of the land on which we're bringing you these announcements, the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and future. We are proud to continue to recognise the exceptional achievements of our professionals and the individuals who contribute such value to our profession and the wider community. The calibre of this year's winners has been outstanding and we are so delighted to be able to present these prizes. On that note, I would like to get underway by making the first announcement today, which applauds the early phase of the profession. The Student Prize for the Advancement of Architecture. The jury members who joined me on this panel were Lisa Moore, Nicole Mosquito Mendes, and Jifa Greenaway. This prize is for the most outstanding contribution made by an individual SONA member towards the advancement of architecture in the areas of leadership, publication, community engagement, and education. I'm delighted to announce that the 2023 Student Prize for the Advancement of Architecture has been awarded to Blake Hillebrand. The importance of social engagement for architecture students during the challenging time surrounding COVID is highlighted by Blake Hillbrand's breadth of activities. Hillbrand's initiatives have helped to foster a strong, positive and engaged student culture by bringing together students from architecture schools across Victoria. Through his involvement with SONA and as president of RMIT's architecture student collective, Rascol, he has instigated and managed multiple events over the past year with passion and enthusiasm. He has sought out opportunities across a variety of domains to provide student learning and mentorship, competitions and celebrations in ways that are creative, collaborative, informative and joyful. With a palpable spirit of generosity, Hillbrand has worked to bring architecture students together and in doing so has provided much needed connection and support during a difficult time. His sense of care, consideration for others and desire to give back have contributed significantly to the important work of building a social and sustainable community. Congratulations, Blake. Thank you, Shannon. I'm incredibly honoured to receive this prestigious award and I'd like to express my gratitude to the jury, the Institute of Architects and the architecture community in Melbourne, nationally and abroad for the immense support over the last few years. I've been privileged to meet and collaborate with a range of fantastic peers, mentors and experts through the industry. And I want to acknowledge the generous donation of time and energy that has been given to help foster enthusiastic students like myself. If I look back, it's been a lot of fun organising events and initiatives for SONA and Rascal. And at the end of the day, it's been about the connections and the people I've met along the way. To me, it's great to see these events and initiatives get national recognition. The need for constant discourse amongst our students, academics and professionals is essential in propelling our industry forward, bit by bit, towards a profession that is connected and informed. I look forward to striving to better our profession whilst continuing to help develop and ensure students have a voice and direct opportunities to grow. The next 12 months is looking to be a really exciting year with a focus on the SONA National Executive Team and the International Chapter Council. Thanks again. Well deserved, Blake. Our next prize is the Blue Scope Glenn Merkett Student Prize, which has been established to recognise an outstanding architectural student's work, which demonstrates excellence in response to place, technology and Australian culture. This year, the jury was chaired by Laura Harding, with Nicole Mosquito Mendes and myself as jurors. I would now like to hand over to Lucy Carson from Blue Scope Steel, major national partner of the Institute and this prize, to say a few words and announce the 2023 recipient. Over to you, Lucy. My name is Lucy Carson, and I am proud to be announcing this year's winner for the Blue Scope Glen Merkett Student Prize. I love this award. The projects and the people genuinely inspire me, and I'm proud to be part of this architecture community. Congratulations to all of our entrants, but in particular, our winner, Rhiannon Brownbill. Congratulations. 
Wadeo Galamban Gurad. Welcome to Sacred Country. My name is Shannon Foster and I'm a Dorawali Yora knowledge keeper and registered traditional owner in the Sydney Basin. Tonight and today we're going to be talking about Mamel, which is a beautiful island in the middle of Sydney Harbour. I'd like to welcome you to this beautiful place and honour all of the ancestors of all the people who are connected here, including my family, the Dorawal, the Dara, the Gundungara and the Gaimaregal, and many, many more. The project that we're talking about is Buridi Gura, Buridi Ora, Healthy Country is Healthy People. And I'm incredibly proud of Rhiannon Brownbill for the work that she has done to bring this project to life. And especially a big thank you to Joe Kinneborough of UTS, who did an absolutely brilliant job of being supervisor over this project. So, Dejadi Guru Gwanamia, thank you for remembering our ancestors. Welcome to this beautiful place. And Niyingi Balima Nandirita. May you always see the beauty of this earth. Rhiannon Brambill's project, Arudi Gurat, Arudi Ora, Healthy Country, Healthy People, captivated the jury intellectually and emotionally. Drawn from engagement with Aboriginal elders and an Aboriginal knowledge keeper's circle, it challenges the protocols of healthcare framed by Western medicine, exploring instead how people might work, live and heal with country. Situated on Maymel Island in Sydney Harbour and cultivating a rich understanding of place, the project not only respects but actively engages with the natural environment. Its singular architectural form acknowledges traditional structures but resists sentimentality to provide a confident, contemporary response to the brief. It is impossible to remain an impassive observer when confronted by the technical drawings developed to describe this project. They effortlessly communicate the precision and richness of thinking that underpins all aspects of its conception and development. The jury is delighted that Brown Bill is currently working with the health sector to explore how the findings of this project could transform contemporary practice. Congratulations, Rhiannon. Thank you, Lucy and Blue Scope. I would like to start by thanking country, Mamel Gura Nura, where the salt water washes in from the ocean to meet the sandstone shorelines that sustain the diverse ecologies that were incredibly instrumental to this project. I would also like to thank the Darawal Elders and Knowledge Holders Circle for their advice and guidance as collaborators, whilst also acknowledging the many First Nations peoples of Sydney who continue to hold care and custodial connections to Mamel. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone within the Faculty of Architecture at UTS and my family and friends. Mostly, I would like to thank my mum and dad as the inspiration behind this project and my two thesis supervisors, Joe Patterson Kinnenborough and Shannon Foster, for their perseverance and mentorship as they guided me through my degree. Exceptional work and congratulations, Rhiannon. We now move to the Leadership and Sustainability Prize, which recognises exceptional leadership and an outstanding contribution to the advancement of sustainability of the built environment. It was a pleasure to chair this jury along with my fellow jurors, Paul Memmott, Andrew Pickard and Sarah Lebner. This prize recognises achievement through architecture, effective advocacy, education and community engagement. The jury have awarded the 2023 Leadership and Sustainability Prize to Iris C. Young Huang. Iris C. Young Huang has committed her career to thought leadership, research and education, including a dedication to allowing engineering to enhance design rather than dictate it. Huang's contribution to sustainability in the built fabric of our megacities is undeniable with their influence extending not only across international cities, but also across environmental design disciplines. Huang has demonstrated innovation in multiple areas, including the design of a green building assessment tool currently being used in Hong Kong, and the implementation of incentives that attempt to affect mass change and inspire further research. She takes the knowledge and experience gained through her work into other professions and into the education of future generations, which speaks to her greater goal of giving back to society. Congratulations, Iris. Thank you, Shannon. It really is a great honour to be recognised for my work in sustainability and practice and teaching. A few years ago, a colleague of mine confided in me. He struggled to find design aspect of sustainable design. Much of sustainability work is done through a hardcore engineering by engineers, and despite all their good intention, it often fails to influence design. 
I believe it is our job as architects to be educated on sustainability and to lead sustainable design, making it an integral part of architecture and built environment from the get go. Once a client asked me what the most sustainable way of building was, and in the back of my mind, I knew the answer was not to build. I have always been driven by a desire to make difference in the society I live and serve, and I hope I will continue my contribution in the next 20 years of my career in practice and teaching. And hopefully by then, I will be able to answer the question with confidence what sustainable way of building is. Thank you. Congratulations again, Iris. With a focus back on education, the Neville Quarry Architectural Education Prize identifies an outstanding contribution in architectural education in one or more areas of teaching, scholarship, research, leadership, and community engagement in both higher education and wider community forums. Along with my jury members, Stuart Tanner, Lisa Moore, John Doyle, and Nicole Mosquita Mendes, I was pleased to chair this jury, whose task was not an easy one, with the exceptional quality of submissions. It is my pleasure to announce the recipient of the Neville Quarry Architectural Education Prize for 2023 is Michael Mossman. Michael Mossman, a Kukulyalanji man from far north Queensland, is an outstanding practitioner, teacher and leader whose exemplary commitment to architectural education is of great benefit to students, practitioners and the profession. An Associate Dean, Indigenous, at the University of Sydney's School of Architecture, Design and Planning, Mossman is committed to indigenising the architectural curriculum within the university, as well as on a broader national platform through the Architects Accreditation Council of Australia. His extensive interactions and collaborations with colleagues and community representatives are contributing substantially to the architectural education landscape in a critical and expansive manner. By identifying First Nations cultural considerations as an agent for structural change within our profession, Mossman is fundamentally shifting awareness in design thinking, in architecture and placemaking. His work is invaluable to the profession and to ensuring that future Australian architects are educated in a way that considers our influence on and responsibility to place. Congratulations, Michael. So thank you, Shannon, for this wonderful prize. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from Gadigal country and pay respects to elders past and present and to future generations of leaders so thanks to my nominator for this prize, my dear colleagues who provided support for my nomination and to the jury. Architectural education is so important to me to inform the next generations of practitioners and researchers in our discipline and to also inform myself to grow and always learn. I get great pleasure in teaching and interacting with students and academic and professional practice colleagues about the qualities of architecture and its relationships with country and First Nations communities and cultures. Architecture is an important discipline in society and there's now tremendous opportunities to further enrich the qualities of place shaping through meaningful interactions with country and greater understandings of broader cultural landscapes, which has sustained life for millennia. My role in architectural education is all about providing a platform for students to build on and create new paradigms with obligations and aspirations to restore the qualities of place for more meaningful, distinct place-based practices that care for country so that we can connect with each other. Thank you. An outstanding achievement. Well done, Michael. With great anticipation, I'm now honoured to be announcing the National President's Prize for 2023. Recognising contribution to the advancement of architecture in an outstanding way is no easy accomplishment. This year's recipients are recognised for their immense contributions to architecture over many decades, with an enduring commitment to raising the profile of the profession within Australia and beyond our borders. Having personally been witness to much of this great work for which this year's prize is given, it is my very great pleasure to award the 2023 National President's Prize to Catherine Townsend, Bruce Townsend, Dominic Pelle, and Nathan Judd. 
awarded to Catherine Townsend, Bruce Townsend, Nathan Judd, and Dominic Pell in recognition of their immense contribution to architecture over many decades through the Contemporary Australian Architects Speaker Series. Now in its 35th year, the series is an innovative and exciting platform that engages audiences both in Australia and overseas in conversations about the benefits of well-designed buildings and the contribution of architects and architecture to our society. Canberra-based architects Bruce and Catherine Townsend initiated the series in 1987 under the auspices of the ACT chapter of the Australian Institute of Architects. Its aim was to provide an opportunity for ACT architects to hear Australia's leading contemporary practitioners speak about their work and their views on the state of the profession. Since then, the annual series has grown in popularity, with its audience reaching well beyond the architectural profession. In 2004, after running the series for 17 years, Catherine and Bruce passed on the baton to fellow Canberra architects Dominic Pell and Nathan Judd, who are the current conveners. Today, it continues to provide a window into some of the most highly considered architectural projects by Australian architects and to tackle the bigger questions of what constitutes good design, why good design is important, the importance and recognition of country and the future of our cities. The vision and enduring commitment of Catherine and Bruce Townsend, Dominic Pell and Nathan Judd is to be applauded for raising the profile of architecture and design with audiences in Australia and globally. Congratulations, Catherine, Bruce, Dominique and Nathan. Thank you, Shannon. We are humbled and delighted to accept this award. We do feel that the award is focused uh, very much on the community of architects and also the general public who've been such passionate supporters of this outward focus lecture. Uh, we were very happy to um, welcome Ian Annalzark, our primary sponsor from BCA Certifiers, to the uh, to the community of um, of architects and and speakers, and we're also very happy to be able to hand over responsibility for this lecture to Nathan and Dom, who've taken it on for the last fifteen years. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks so much, Shannon, for this uh, significant award. We're all very honoured to accept this from you today. Um, since taking over from Catherine and Bruce, uh, Nathan and I have really enjoyed being part of the speaker series and delivering it to our Canberra audience and more recently to our national and international audiences. Um, a massive thank you um, and a, a thank you to our sponsors, to the ACT chapter and to the National Gallery of Australia, who we've had a pleasure of working with. And a massive thanks to all the guest speakers who have been part of the speaker series for a long time in making this a wonderful event. Again, thanks so much, Shannon, and we look forward to delivering the speaker series in September this year. Congratulations again. That now brings us to the final announcement, the gold medal. As the Australian Institute of Architects' highest honour, the gold medal recognises distinguished service by architects who have designed or executed buildings of high merit, producing work of great distinction that has advanced architecture or endowed the profession in a distinguished manner. It was my absolute pleasure to be joined on the jury by Tony Giannone, Julie Eisenberg, Hank Koenig, and John Wardle. This year's recipient is an outstanding architect whose design practice is renowned internationally as a significant and innovative reference point in Australian architecture and urban design. It is my greatest privilege to announce that the jury have awarded the 2023 gold medal to Kirsten Thompson. Thompson is an outstanding architect whose design practice is renowned internationally as a significant and innovative reference point in Australian architecture and urban design. For more than three decades, she has contributed generously to architectural discourse across the country through her work as a designer, educator and highly respected keynote speaker. Further, she has displayed dedication to the profession through extensive efforts with the Australian Institute of Architects including captaincy at the 2019 National Architecture Conference, creative directorship of the 2005 National Architecture Conference, co-curatorship of Australia's official contribution to the 2008 Venice Architecture Biennale, and participation in countless design panels and juries, all while leading her practice with a level of skill, consideration and aesthetic to which many aspire. Spanning varying scales, from large public projects to meticulous domestic architecture, Thompson's work is at once generous, bold, and highly nuanced. Her interventions are taut and beautiful in their own right, 
delivering a sense of wonder and inquisition to even the most experienced of her peers. Integrating sustainable principles and a multidisciplinary approach to architecture, Thompson's work is framed by a deep understanding of ecology and landscape. She has set precedence in her determination to extend the useful life of existing buildings. Finally, the distinctive economy and lean sensibility of her designs highlight the value and beauty of finite resources. Thompson is the creative design director across all projects at Kirsten Thompson Architects. Thompson founded KTA after formative experiences at Melbourne practice Robinson Chen, commencing with a series of residential commissions. These were immediately recognised as assured, inventive and part of the continuum of Melbourne's residential architecture scene established generations earlier. KTA's contribution to the architectural fabric of our built environment has been recognised by numerous awards at state, national and international level. The Australian Institute of Architects Gold Medal is awarded in honour of the quality and breadth of Thompson's work, a design ethos that favours subtle expression and graciousness over force, and her propensity to address some of the biggest issues of our time. Through her work in academia and as a role model for women everywhere, she is an inspiration to the profession as a whole and to future generations of architects. Congratulations, Kirsten. Well, a huge congratulations to Kirsten. We've joined her in her studio today to hear a little bit about what we can expect from the tour. And so now I'd like to hand over. Thank you, Shannon. It's with profound appreciation that I thank the Australian Institute of Architects, my peers and the jury for this recognition, the gold medal. I think of this milestone as an acknowledgement of past achievements, but also a future challenge to continue the purpose of the practice I founded Kirsten Thompson Architects, with a design of buildings that meaningfully connect people with place and the fostering of a stimulating and supportive workplace culture. And parallel to KTA, to continue with the reward and responsibility of education through studios and talks and advocacy for architecture, whether through design panels, public engagement, or in the research around and doing of exemplars. So it would be a mistake to consider this a point of completion. Rather, the gold medal is a reminder, a prompt to not rest. It is encouragement to keep up the good fight for the valuing of architecture, especially in light of our industry's pressures. This milestone and the body of work and approach to practice it acknowledges is within the context of a life lived through autonomies and partnerings, influences of others, both personal and professional. A father's intellectual curiosity, a mother's practicality and drive, a brother's brothership, a daughter's lived experience of my attempts, not always successful, to balance parenting with work, a prior partner respectful of my determination to be present in the industry, which meant less present at home, a current one supportive of my determination to maintain visibility as founding principle of a woman-led architectural practice. Therefore, the bestowing of the gold medal so far overwhelmingly on individuals gives pause to contemplate one's role relative to that of others within a 30-year practice. KTA started in earnest in 94. As founder, I've provided the thread of thought continuity along which many have gathered and which they have inflected. I take this opportunity to acknowledge some key contributors and dear collaborators because architecture is typically the work of many. Michelle Black, earliest colleague, 94 to 97, contributor to West Coast House. Lynn Chu, longest KTA colleague, whose relentless kindness, care and empathy towards colleagues and clients is foundational to KTA's culture. Simone Koch, a gifted and rigorous architect within KTA between 97 to 2005, contributor to House at Lake Conawarra, amongst others. And finally, Kelly Mackay, whose thumbprints are all over KTA and its buildings, especially Caram Downs Police Station, Balfi Park Housing and Clyde Creek Primary School. From 2005 to 2022, Kelly worked alongside me to provide consistently high levels of insight, leadership and determination to the guidance of teams and the frequently hard task of making ordinary buildings excellent by leveraging difficult circumstances to extract architectural opportunity. 
most recent principal collaborators who have joined Lin Chu and I in the leadership of KTA include Toby Pond, Claire Humphreys and Michael Blancardo. To them and many others listed in our monograph of 2021 who have contributed in various ways to KTA, thank you. When I started my practice in 1994, I had no particular plan, but I did have a hunch that an architectural practice could rethink some of the questionable myths foundational to some of its most celebrated figures. For example, that design quality and business acumen were not mutually exclusive, nor a rigorous design culture with a supportive workplace one. That an architect could show strength and sensitivity, clarity of leadership and keen listening. In being conscious of these myths, thanks to my 80s training at RMIT, I could give form to an alternate model of architectural leadership, one that challenged at least some stereotypes with actions and perceptions of these for others, especially younger women. A determination to take on a wider scope of project scale and program was deliberate to avoid being pigeonholed or playing to expectations of what women architects should do. I'm pleased to have played my part alongside some remarkable peers to change those expectations and set the scene for a more nuanced and considerably more women-led profession. I look forward to the privilege of the gold medal tour as an opportunity to share more thoughts on this complex but marvellous profession. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Kirsten. Um, it's an immense honour and very well deserved. Um, we've joined you in your practice today and it'd be great to hear a little bit about what it means to win the gold medal. Thank you, Shannon, and thank you to the Institute as well. Uh, certainly a much appreciated acknowledgement of past efforts, but I must say I take it more of as a challenge to keep up the work and um, into the future, especially around buildings and advocacy and education as well. So it's certainly not an end point. Absolutely not. I think one of the things that I find most um, impressive about the gold medal is that it does give you a further platform mm -hmm. to, you know, continue work that, you know, you've had over a career. Um, are there particular issues that you'd like to be able to address when mm. you uh, over your platform? Mm. No, you're right. I mean, a big part of so far what I've been keen to do is bridge um, practice with advocacy around architecture and the value of design. I think a real challenge, which I hope to address in the tour, is thinking about how as architects we might be better at explaining or articulating the value of architecture to a non-architectural audience. So that's a real challenge. What a fantastic uh, aim to have for your tour. I think architects are famously good at speaking about architecture to architects. Mm. And one of the issues that I think that we have as a profession is that we're not great at articulating what our value is mm. to the non-architectural community. And I think that at a, at a time where our building quality, um, how we face the climate crisis mm. is so intense, it would be wonderful for architects to find a way to better communicate with mm. the public about what we do. No, look, I, I definitely agree um, in simple terms what the values are, not just what things look like, but what they do. That's a big part of uh, us explaining our own work and it's just how we expand that understanding. I think another thing that I'd like to um, tackle is the link between the business of architecture and the business of design, I see them as not mutually exclusive. And in order to do good design, we need to have viable businesses. And so I'm really interested in thinking through um, and hopefully contributing to that conversation about how we can do, do both. It's almost seen as a dirty word, isn't it? To have profit as an architectural business and definitely something we have to overcome, I think. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the early days in your career and experiences that you've had that have impacted how you, not only how you work as an architect, but how you run your firm? Sure. Um, I'd have to say I, the way in which I think and I hope as a critical practitioner, much of that stems from my education at RMIT and then in turn teaching as well, which was, and the sort of challenge we always had 
was to have a position, take a position on things. So that was very early and important um, foundation to the practice. Then um, bringing that thinking and clarity to the making of buildings every day and in turn to the making of it as a, as a business and a workplace. So um, again, linking how we do what we do and in order to do what we do, making buildings well. And is there something I think um, that you would say to younger practitioners who are just starting in their career perhaps? Is there advice that you would offer, you know, people just starting out? I think our industry it has, faces a number of challenges and I think especially when we get together as a group, we can spend quite a bit of time comparing notes on the difficulties of practice and industry right now especially for instance balancing the right sort of conditions especially around equity um, that we would all like to see but to do that we need um, strength to strengthen our position in the industry in the broader um, community as well so I would say to a young person contemplating architecture or a young practitioner that you can be aware of those challenges and you can hopefully find ways to do your part in um, advocating for change around those because if we all do that we will hopefully strengthen the position of our profession more um, and that's a very significant part of the work that the institute does and hopefully I can do through the tour as part of that. I think it's something that we need to learn to embrace a little bit more, probably as a general people, but mm. also as a profession, that mm. we're really stronger for our diversity. Mm. And I think that one of the things I really like over the last year of being involved is that there's a real change in the air and mm. there's real joy to be had mm. in recognising how far we've come mm. and being a part of mm. the change going forward. So mm. I think it, I think there's mm. a real positivity to that and mm. it's a wonderful career to have. And I think anybody thinking about it should, you know, be inspired and motivated to be part of this real shift that's happening at the moment. Well, we're really looking forward to the tour kicking off in August. The Institute will keep everybody informed about dates and locations. Mm -hmm. And is there any final comments you'd like to make before we let you get on with your day? I'm really looking forward to the chance to speak to colleagues or with colleagues all around the country. That's a great privilege. And it's also a wonderful prompt to think further about uh, the past but also the future of the industry. This gold medal tour is a chance to, to speculate on it as well and I always like that kind of challenge. Fantastic, well I can't wait and I look forward to welcoming you to Canberra and um, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today and congratulations to all of the 2023 National Prize recipients.